legal team or assistance. We will now move to the next stage. You remember I had advised the House order Joyce Kamene. This is not a moment where the speaker can exercise the option to exclude you from proceedings, but I know you differently. You are normally a very dignified person. I don't know what is the problem today. I want to urge the House that as we move to this stage, you remember we said at five, the Deputy President had been assigned two hours in accordance with the standing orders. The standing orders say not more than two hours. So he may exercise to spend the two hours or less as he wishes. Secondly, once he finishes, then the minority leader, majority leader, will take the floor as we had agreed. After that, then the mover will be invited to reply. And after that, you will go into a voting session. Your Excellency, once you finish, you have the option to remain in the house or to leave because you'll have spent your time as allocated by the House. I want to encourage you members to maintain your silence, to maintain your decorum, and to maintain the dignity of both the House and yourselves in listening to the subject, to this motion, who is the Deputy President of the country. And I invite you, Your Excellency, you have a choice you have a choice between speaking yourself or speaking through your legal counsel. Yes, uh, Kamkate, what is out of order? Your Excellency, you may take your seat. Let him see it. Mr. Speaker, while I did not want to interrupt my, His Excellency, the Deputy President, who is my brother-in-law, Mr. Speaker, Yesterday, the Deputy President uh, on national television uh, referred to this House in unpalatable terms. And Mr. Speaker, while it is his right to say whatever he wants to say, as a former member himself, Mr. Speaker, would I be in order, Mr. Speaker, that the Deputy President, as a precursor to his uh, speech, apologizes to this House? Mr. Speaker, this House, this House, Mr. Speaker, he used the words, he referred to this House as the theater of the absurd. Mr. Speaker, this house is an honorable house of the people of Kenya. These are elected members of parliament, Mr. Speaker. This, is neither, this house is neither a theater, neither is, is there absurdity in this house, Mr. Speaker. So I would, I would request, Mr. Speaker, that the honorable deputy president exercises um, dignifies this house by offering an apology. I know he has, he has uh, uh, very little support in this house now, You've made your but he may get a little support even just from that apology. He has to apologize to this house, Mr. Speaker, before he proceeds with his speech, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Order. No more points of order. Your Excellency, David President, as you take the floor, this morning, the speaker made a communication and indicated that we found it abhorrent the, some of the contents of your interview last, your speech rather, your statement last evening. 
in which you described this house in not very good terms. We also indicated that the rules of this house preclude matters pending before the house from being conversed in other fora, particularly by members of the house and to an extent of broad interpretation of the standing orders, a person who is subject to the motion going on in the house. It is spilled milk, it's water under the bridge, you said what you said, but uh, it is only fair that being an immediate former member of this house, that you exercise your conscience to hold as to whether this is a theater of the absurd or is an honorable National Assembly of the Republic of Kenya. You may start by addressing that. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. And thank you, the honorable members present, for according me this opportunity to prosecute the matter before us. Mr. Speaker, sir, I have tremendous respect for this great institution. Having served here for five years between 2017 and 2022, and I appear here in a very nostalgic moment that I'm back in the house where I stayed for five years despite the fact that I've come under difficult circumstances. Mr. Speaker, maybe the sound people, is that okay now? Mr. Speaker, sir, and the honorable members, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity. I hope, Your Excellency, you have been advised by your lawyers that uh, you are here to respond to specific issues yes. in the motion. I have my advice. And not to talk generally. I know. Yeah, so rules of relevance will still apply to you as they apply to all members. Mr. Speaker, the motion before this great house alleges that two years ago, since assuming office, I had acquired property and wealth whose estimated value 5.2 billion shillings, a significant number of properties to which this sum of 5.2 billion is erroneously and maliciously attached, belongs to my late brother, the late Honorable James Dito Gachagua, and as demonstrated by his will, a copy of which is attached, the fact as follows. Olive Garden, my response. The allegations that I own the Olive Garden Hotel is false. The truth is that Olive, Olive Garden Hotel used to belong to my deceased brother, the late Honorable James Dirito Gachagua, and therefore has never been my property. This is information that most of you may be aware of, as it is in public domain. Upon his demise, my late brother left a will in which, in his recognition, that I can take care of his family, he appointed me as one of the executors of his estate. In the said will, my late brother directed that the hotel should be sold, among other properties and proceeds distributed as per the will. I'm also listed as a beneficiary together with other persons named therein. In accordance with these instructions, the hotel was sold by the ex executors to a third party. Owing to the above, I do not own the hotel and have never owned it contrary to acquisition in the motion. For the benefit of this August House and the general public, I have annexed to this response copies of the following supporting documents. My little brother's will, sale agreement dated 17th May 2023, an official search for Olive Garden Hotel Limited. Mr. Speaker, Bipingo Beach Resort, just as in Olive Garden, above this allegation is also false. Pingo Beach Resort belongs to the estate of the late James Dirito Kachagua. For the benefit of this house and the general public, I have attached annex to this response copy of the official search of Pingo Beach Resort Limited, confirming that the hotel is still in the name of my little brother's estate. Queen's Gate Service Apartments. 
The allegation is also false as the property belonged to my late brother. Queensgate Service Apartments, registered in the name of Ipingo Beach Resort Limited, was sold to Cooperative Bank of Kenya Limited. Staff Retirement Benefits Scheme as evidence by the agreement for the dated 4th May 2022. And a transfer dated 5th October 2022 marks Annex RG6. Lad Paso Ruguru Kiamariga 2023 in Madeira East constituency, which have originally constructed a helicopter landing facility. My response is I do confirm that I own the above reference property, which has approximately 2.5 acres in size and which have planted napier grass for my dairy cows. I purchased the land in the year 2023 for 3.5 million from farm proceeds coming from my dairy farm. I have read through the motion and there is no iota of evidence adduced of the impropriety in the way I acquired this small property. Finally, on this matter, I wish to confirm that there is no helicopter landing facility for this particular parcel on the motion. This part is also false. I attach a copy of the agreement for purchase of this property marked Annexia RG7. 40 acres of land purchased in Kakuret within Cabraine in Nyeri County. My response. I confirm that I own a property having bought it in 2015, a time when I was not a state officer. I had not been even been elected as member of parliament from the Honorable Jeroga Wainaina, member of parliament for Kenny, who is present in this house. Oh, I'm not sure whether he's present. Therefore, this property I purchased 10 years ago and not two years ago during my tenure as deputy president and as indicated in the motion, the allegation is false. I've read through the motion and there is no iota of evidence adduced of any impropriety in the way I acquired this property. For the benefit of this Agus House and the general public, I have annexed to this response copy of the agreement for sale and purchase of this property marked as Annexia RG8. Eight acres of land in Meru County. For the record, I wish to confirm that I do not own eight acres of land in Meru. This allegation is false. However, in the spirit of full disclosure, I would like to confirm that I have purchased 29 acres of land in Meru, the land of my mother, which I bought on around 9 February 2024 through a loan granted to me by Solution Circle Limited, which I am a member. This said circle has a charge registered against the title, which it continues to hold as security until I fully repay the loan. For the benefit of the August House and the general public, I have annexed to this response copies of the agreement of sale marked RG9 and a letter dated 15 July 2024 from Solution Circle Limited confirming that they financed the purchase of the property marked Annexia RG10. Dairy farm in Nyandarwa County. My response is I do not have a dairy farm in Nyandarwa County, therefore this allegation is false. The land in Nyandarwa has no single animal. Companies. The motion alleges there are 22 companies owned by my family members and which have been used to massively load money and conceal proceeds of crime, corruption and benefit from influence peddling. My response is the mover of the motion has listed the 22 companies associated with me and has alleged that they have been used to massively load money and conceal proceeds of crime corruption and benefit from influence peddling. I've carefully gone through the motion and I've not seen any evidence to support or prove the allegations therein. It is not clear to me how to respond without having seen any evidence incriminating the companies. I'd like to be clear that these companies have not been involved in any illegal activities and I believe that is why the move of the motion has not tabled any evidence of impropriety with respect to the companies. It does appear to me that the mover of the motion was so meticulous to get all the companies associated with me and my family. And I believe that if he also had evidence of illegalities committed by the companies, he would have shared or tabled that for the record. However, it is not possible to get evidence of illegality where there is none. 
having said the above, allow me just to mention a few companies because there are many. Regarding the Gashagua Foundation, this is a foundation I incorporated in 2022, and I clarify that the foundation is a non-profit making entity with the sole objective of uplifting the lives of less privileged society. This foundation therefore does not trade, and honorable members, you are aware that by law, a foundation cannot be used to trade. Since incorporation, the foundation has received a total of 12 million shillings, which has been utilized as per the schedule marked Annexa RG11, which is paying school fees for children in Pwani University and other universities across the country. Dokas regarding the foundation, because she is not here to defend herself, this is a foundation founded by my wife, by my wife, Pastor Dokas, incorporated immediately we came into office as a non-profit making entity for the sole purpose of rehabilitation of drug addicts, widows, single mothers and orphans. A brief write-up of this foundation together with its achievements is annexed here with as Annexure RG12.